guess we can restart this. Welcome back to another episode of Paper Preview. I don't know what else I was going to add there, so... Yeah, it's the lovely tag team duel of Wonder and Shop. He's Wonder, I'm Shop. Nothing lovely about that. Your mama loved it last night. Oh! <laughs> anyway, I'm joined by the Lucha Underground expert, Wonder Pockets. Okay. You want to say anything to the camera? No? No. Ladies, he's single and he doesn't give a fuck. And he bakes. In the good way. In, in the good way. In the good way. He makes amazing cakes. I don't. I don't blaze it. You don't blaze it. He wishes. Nah. Just to pass a boring Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I am the always awesome War Machine MJ. No, you're not. You're not always awesome. Shut up, you mouth breather. Just go ask your mom. <laughs> anyway. You neck beard. Okay. Since the number one misfit isn't here, we're going to still do this anyway. This is our preview of the three-week wrestling Christmas event known as Ultima Lucha Dos. Now, the step up from last year's is three weeks. It, it almost feels like Christmas. It makes me want to cry. It, it, it's going to be Christmas in July. Don't cry. It shows weakness. Shut up. At least I didn't cry at the end of Captain America in front of a whole fucking theater. Oh, yeah, I did that. You did that. Yeah, I did that. Lady, ladies, he's single and he's a pussy. Sure. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Ultima Lucha Dose, which is our favorite time of the year. It, it's a lot better than WrestleMania season. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely a lot better. But, uh, yeah, three nights. Three Wednesday nights, three weeks in a row. It's heaven. Oh my god. It's, it's the best shit on earth. This is going to be the season finale of season two. They're going to be coming back to the temple for season three. We don't know what's come, going to be aired. It's already been taped. We don't want to come out. Fuck you. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and start the match off. It's going to be the fatal four way for a. Uh, it's, it's a fatal four way, but according to Dario Cueto, it's a four a unique opportunity match. Yeah, he actually took about two minutes to try and make sure everyone got that. Mm -hmm. It's a fatal four way. For a unique opportunity. I have no idea what the unique opportunity is. Uh, could be a shot at the Lucha Underground Championship. It could be a new a, title. A new title. We don't know yet. He said it's going to be the yep. biggest unique opportunity he's ever given out, and he's handed out some pretty unique opportunities. Yep. And just remember, El Jefe is practically making deals with the devil. He gives you a good opportunity, and uh, make, it'll come at some cost. This one's going to be for free. It's going to be The Machine Cage, Mr. Swolverine versus Tejano, The Mac, and Son of Havoc. <gasps> now, I don't know about you, but I like saying uh, some of these wrestler names like they do, like um, Melissa Santos says them, like mm -hmm. Son of Havoc. It sounds pretty cool. But of course, all three of these guys are Four. the favorites going in. Tejano is definitely not the favorite. He's an underdog. He did get the most heat from the crowd. He did. He got the most heat, which is weird because he hasn't generated that much heat. But then again, he's up against the awesomeness that is Son of Havoc and the Mac, and then the unpredictability that is the Machine Cage. I mean, what more can you say? It's going to be a knockdown, nasty, drag out fight. Oh, yeah. We still don't know. We know it's a fatal four-way, but he hasn't. He could, knowing El Jefe, he could change the stipulation night of. He could make it a battle royal. Uh, anything goes. Anything goes battle royal. Mm. That's going to be fierce. But uh, who do you guys say wins? Mainstream? I want to say. He's already out. No, he's, his eyes are open. Oh. Um, He's got zero buzz in. Uh, who do you pick to win? I guess who? The, the Fatal Four Way for the unique opportunity. The four unique opportunity. There's the Swolverine, the machined Swolverine cage. Tejano. Tejano. Son of Havoc. And the Mac. Me. You? You don't count. <laughs> no, Cage. Cage? 
picking Mr. Wolverine. Yeah. Mr. Get My Shit In. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Josh, who do you pick? Um. Uh, really, any any of them could win. With like that's the good thing about Lucha Underground. You don't know like you have you have fan favorites to go into a match, but that doesn't mean they're gonna win. Uh. I want to see Son of Havoc or Cage win. I wouldn't mind if anybody won them. You just wanted to see the match. Yeah. I agree. But I'm going to have to go with Cage. Machine's got a rep machine, man. All right. Next match. Oops, wrong way. It's going to be a death match. It's going to be the Ultimate Hunter, King Cuerno, versus the Man of a Thousand Deaths, Mil Mortez. Your thoughts, mainstream. Time's up. Your thoughts, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> I know. A, another na knockout, nasty drag out. Not a fight, but a death match. And given that it's a death match, who knows what we're going to see? Somebody actually dying. It's possibly. possibly. It's going to. It's This match is running on uh, Thunderdome. It's running on Thunderdome rules. Two men enter, one man leaves. And. I'm gonna. I want to say Mill, but I'm gonna give it to King Cuerno. Because he's he's been one step ahead of Mills at ev every turn. He's outsmarting him. He's Mills has the strength advantage and just the pure rage advantage. But uh, Cuerno's got the smart advantage. So I'm gonna say Cuerno. Cuerno is cold, calculating. Not to mention he also had Mills Mortez practically in his grasp in his trophy room at the end of uh, Graver Consequences. So he's definitely got that psychological energy for him. Yep. So I'm going to say Cuerno. Malcolm, who do you say? Yeah. Mills. Mills, you're, you're, going to, you're going to play the dead man advocate. Yeah. Mills. Okay. It's going to be a good fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Next match is going to be the debut oh. of Black Lotus as she takes on her friend, Dragoon Azteca Jr., who is also making his debut at Ultima Lucha. Hey, sure. Well, his... Ultimate Lucha debut. I need to find my t-shirt. Yeah, he's going to find out if Black Lotus killed his t-shirt, and if Black Lotus killed... Uh, if, um, Dragoon Azteca killed Black Lotus' parents, you know, that kind of deal. Mm, uh -uh. Uh, Dragoon Azteca Jr., his teacher, yes, his t-shirt was Dragoon Azteca Sr. Yes, that's Dragoon what Azteca Sr. was the one that supposedly killed Black Lotus' parents. Yeah. And she killed Sr., for it. Yeah. And they, and neither one of them knows the truth, so the truth is going to come out in this match. Um, I don't know. We haven't seen, we haven't seen really any in-ring, from any in-ring combat or anything from Black Lotus. What we have seen is she used an open palm thrust to break the back of, yeah, uh, Dragoon Estica Sr. So, it very well could be a dark match. Definitely. Dark. Well, I wouldn't dark, say a dark match. A dark horse match. A dark horse match, yes. Um, I'm actually going to give give it to Black Lotus. I mean, they they played up a little bit about her saying that she's been with the triads, I, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. They played that story up. So she's definitely got some martial arts parts. And Dragon Azteca is no slouch, though. It's going to be a nasty fight. I want to say it's going to be one of the more acrobatic fights of the night. Oh, definitely. Malcolm, who you say? Black Lotus. Black, Black Lotus, alright. The next match is going to be the Gift of the Gods match. Remember, seven people with medallions enter to win a belt, which is a free shot at the World Championship. Uh, at the uh, Aztec Gold, sorry. There's World no World Championship. Championship. Oh, God. Don't there, there is no world championship. That's well, I was about to correct you there, buddy. Anyway, it's going to be... If I can do these... Okay. okay. So, it's... Well, turn it sideways. Yeah, it's... It's going to... Damn it, i got to start that over. All right, there we go. Sexy it, star. Yeah. Uh, you, go, you go ahead. You take it. It's the Gift of the Goddess Championship match. It's Sexy Star, Daga, Sinestro de la Muerte, Marty the Moth, Mariposa... Kill shot and Nightclaw and the debut of Nightclaw, the Black Panther looking motherfucker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
the one that Dario Cueto says he he's impressed by his skills. Yeah. Now Nightclaw is also another descendant of Wonder Clans. Jaguar Clan. The Jaguar. The Jaguar. Clan. Yeah. The Jaguar mm -hmm. Clan. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know anything about Nightclaw. Yeah. But nothing at all. Vampiro and Striker they're playing up like they don't know who is who the last man is, but we know. Yeah. All thing I knows. Anyway, as far as the other six go, uh, might as well talk about the elephants in the room. Um, Killshot definitely has a lot of beef with Marty. Um, Marty is once again taking Killshot's dog tags, which... Yeah. Those aren't just Killshot's dog tags. Those are... His fallen comrades. Yeah, his, his brothers in arms co uh, co tags. Dog tags. Dog tags. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Dom! Dom! Damn it, Dom! Anyway, then there's also Sexy Star, who has a lot of beef with Mariposa. Mm -hmm. And after their last encounter against each other, this one is still going to be ugly. The, the other X Factor going into it is the only people that's not going to fight each other in this match is Marty and Mariposa, you know, brother and sister. But I'm interested to see how Dog is going to do in this match. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And will he get any outside help from Cobra Moon? From Cobra Moon. Cobra. Still don't know what's going on there. But uh, yeah, there's something going on there. Man, I, I, I think she wants that dick. I, uh -huh. I'm actually interested to see how Sinestro Del Muerte will do. I'm just thinking that. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say my pick is going to be Sinestro Del Muerte to win. To win. Uh, what do you think, Muscle? I know I don't see, I've never seen Nightclaw before, but I think he's going to win. Well, nobody's ever seen it. But you're going to say Nightclaw's going to win his debut? Yeah. All right. Mm. Give it to Sexy Star. Give it to Sexy. All right. Hey, everybody loves a little Sexy Star, man. Mm -hmm. Come on. Next match is going to be for the Lucha Underground Championship. This one is definitely going to be on the third night. It's going to close out the show. It's going to be... The monster, Matanza Cueto, versus Pentagon Jr. You see, I love saying it like that. Not Pentagon, Pentagon. Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot cooler. Um, of course, they've run the Batman Bane scenario. Um, Matanza broke good old Pentagon, and Pentagon came back stronger from uh, help from his master, Vampiro. Your thoughts, Josh? Uh. The match is definitely not going to turn out the same way the last time they met up did. I uh, think Pentagon's going to show a way stronger outing this time. Having said that, I don't think he'll win the title. You don't think it? I don't think he'll win the title. We need to see at least one more match between Montaza and Niels. Yeah. Or Montaza and Cage. Yeah. We need to see at least one more match between those two and then give Pentagon the title, in my opinion. I, I definitely think Pentagon yeah. is... Um, Oh, give Pentagon the title and then have him feud with Hale Puma. With Hale Puma, that'd yeah. be great. Anyway, I definitely think Pentagon is championship material. Definitely. I mean, he went from being one of the most hated heels in the temple. Now he's got the fans for it and he's still a heel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's still breaking people's arms and they can't get enough of it. Well, I haven't seen him break any arms, but he has been resorting to heel trickery. The night he came back, he broke Shavo's arm to take his place in the match. Oh, oh, yeah, right. I forgot about that. And they broke Mills' arm at the beginning of the season. I forgot yeah. about that, too, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he also, you know, in the six to survive, where Phoenix wouldn't hit Taya, Pentagon had no problem had no kicking problem her No problem whatsoever package pile driving Taya. Not to mention, while she was uh, tied up in the turnbuckle, he also kicked her. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. He had no problem doing that. But I agree with Josh. I don't see Pentagon walking out with the belt. I see him hurting Montanza, putting the fear of God into him, or the fear of Zero Miro, but uh, I don't see him winning. I see Montanza winning. Mm -hmm. Malcolm, who do you say? He thinks walking out with the title. Matanza. Matanza? Yeah. yeah. I actually agreed on something. All right. Off yeah. one, off one fall, bitches. Next match. It's going to be the dream match of Lucha Underground. It's going to be El Rey, Rey Mysterio, the King of Lucha Libre, versus Prince Puma, our favorite. Now, this match, it's more than just, you know, 
something we fantasized about for years, or somebody's fantasized about for years. Basically, this is a match to see who's got it. Ray's trying to prove he can still keep up with the with the current generation of luchadors, and Pumas trying to see if he's better than the best. Your thoughts, Malcolm? This is going to be a great match. Uh, I feel like uh, it's going to be uh, down to the wire. It's going to be down to the wire. It's going to be a clutch win? Yeah, a clutch win. Oh, yeah. It's going to be close. Definitely. Josh, what do you say? I don't, I don't care how this match turns out as long as it lives up to the standard of Rey Mysterio versus Puma. And you know that they're going to be throwing some off-the-wall shit moves. Because not only do you never see Rey Mysterio fight people his own size and stature. Yeah. But from what we've seen of him in Lucha Underground, he can still move like the king. And we know, we definitely know what Puma can do, and I think it'll be really nice to see a one-on-one -on -one match for Rey in Lucha. Yeah. I mean, like I told the guys, I feel like... Rey Mysterio in WWE versus Rey Mysterio in Lucha Underground, it feels like he's definitely gotten faster. I mean, it doesn't feel like he's having to hold back or he's, you know, crippled by bigger guys. He's in there just mixing it up very well. I mean, he had an impressive outing, albeit he got annihilated by Matanza, but he definitely held his own. One one side like WWE would have had it. Yeah. But, um, I say Rey's going to win with Puma going heel. Josh, what's that's what I would pick. You say that, Malcolm? Uh, yeah, so hard to choose. Uh, I'd say Ray would win. Yeah. Ray would win. I'd say Ray wins. Ray wins. Goes for the handshake. Puma gives him the handshake, and then right as they're about to stop it, Puma hits him with a lucha destroyer. Yeah. I mean, I'd get behind a a um a heel Puma. He's mm -hmm. been the crowd favorite. He's been the heart and soul of the temple. Yeah. I mean, he's still my favorite in my book if he went heel. But I can see it. He, he could definitely pull it off. Yeah, he can. Now, next match is going to be a grudge match to see who is the baddest woman in the temple. It's going to be Taya, the perfect woman, versus Ivelisse, the baddest bitch in the temple. Oh, my God. Malcolm, your thoughts? This is going to be a great cat fight, man. It's going to be fucking awesome. Cat fight! It's going to be, it's going to be a great match. It's going to be a perfect match. It's, it's going, going to be a good match. It's going to pull a wall it's around be, that match. It's going to be, we're, we're, going to, we're going to build a temple around this match. Yeah. <laughs> the 1% are going to get their money's worth. The 99% are going to lose their money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd classify but, Lucha Underground as the working man's wrestling. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's but, like um, the ECW of the now wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a good match. Out, you know? Definitely. Hell yeah. I mean, Taya, one of the most hated heels in Lucha Underground. But yeah. she's good. Though. But she's really, really good. And she's beautiful. She's very beautiful. Now, having said that, my thoughts on this match are: I want Evil Lise to win. I want the baddest bitch to win. But. I don't think she will. I think Johnny Mundo will have something to say about the match. He so, might actually be out there. Or he'll, he'll do something about the match. Yeah, he's going to be out there. Yeah. Obviously. I say Ivelisse is going to get the win. Ooh. But I feel like she's going to take a page from Taya's book and play a little dirty. Yeah. I well, Ivelisse already fire. rides that line between heel and face. She doesn't do anything like super heel, but she never does anything face. Yeah. And and I don't think we've been able to see much of the heel side because like a lot of her matches she's been teamed up with people. Yeah. But I I, I do see that she could she could do something heel in this match. She could win by heel. Yes. Yes. I mean Evil Lace is fucking awesome. Baddest bitch, she's like the lead of Blue John the Ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bad bitch can keep up with the boys. Beat them down if she needs to. Oh, yeah. And still look good doing it. She holds her own with the fellas even when she has one good leg. Yeah. She even held her own against Mills, Mill Mortez. Yeah. That's, that's... She looked like she was going to win for a few seconds there. Oh, definitely. I mean, that that's a win in my book. Yeah. So, we all want Evie to win, don't we? Oh, nope. wait, you, you said Ty to win. I want Ivelisse yeah. to win. But, but, but I think Johnny Mundo's going to interfere. Man, Ty is going to win, bro. 
The Tide's gonna win? Yeah. Damn, I'm the only one here who thinks Evie's gonna win. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Either one can win. Gotta, gotta go with my girl Evie, the bad bitch. Yeah, I think Tide's gonna win. And the final match on this card. It, now, we don't know where these are going to end up. We know that the unique opportunity is going to start the show. The title match, the big title match is going to end the show. That this, this, I don't feel like this is enough matches to fill out three hours. I think they're going to have some un off the card matches. Like, there's just going to be, like, I challenge you to this or I challenge you to that kind of match. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think there's going to be, uh, you know, guys that aren't the power players, yeah. you know, like Arjenes or Mascarilla Sagrada, Joey Ryan. Mm -hmm. They're definitely going to finish up that storyline with Joey Ryan, yeah. um, Mr. Cisco, and Cortez Castro. They're going to try and finish that up. Yeah. Wrap that up nice and neat. But, but, but I don't, th before we do this last match, I believe yes that will happen, but I don't think those matches are gonna be good. are no no, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say they're gonna be low low matches. I don't think they're gonna be slow matches at all. I think some of them could very well be contenders for the better matches for that hour of the show. Yeah, it's just gonna be like keeping the gas pedal pressure. Yeah. Uh I, I don't know, last year's Ultima Lucha had one, you know, match that wasn't that good. So um, Blue Demon Jr. versus Tejano. Yeah. I mean, that, that match was kind of, you know, lowest point of Ultima Lucha. But other than that, it recovered very nicely off, off of it. Anyway, last match. It's going to be for the Lucha Underground Trios Championship. It will be the proclaimed Super Friends, Drago, Aerostar, Phoenix, versus Lucha Underground Worldwide, PJ Black, Jack Evans, Johnny Mundo. Let's call it Team Zero. Six. Team Six. Yeah, yeah, that's a good name. Or as I like to call him, Team Gringo. Yeah. What do you say, Mom? I was saying Johnny Zero. Johnny Zero. Now, I've said it before. Drago is one of my favorite characters as far as you know aesthetics go. Like playing into the character, costume, all his that. His fucking costume is amazing. I'd say like his. Him playing into character is as good as Demon Finn Balor or The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Aerostar is definitely one of the Dark Horse power players. We haven't seen much of him, and what we've seen is just impressive. Yeah. Phoenix, however, is pretty much the Daniel Bryan of Lucha Underground. Yeah. He's got the big draw, no matter what he does, he can't go heel. Or the fans won't buy the heel. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, he's got the, the heart factor. Not to mention, and no matter what happens to him, you can't keep him down. Yeah. He won't stay down. Not to mention, he's also got a sweet-ass catchphrase. He's got the whole animal. Yeah. He's been just a few of the things that have yet to beat Phoenix. He's been dragged to hell by Mil Mortez. He, he's, he's been buried by Mil Mortez. He's been powerbombed through the office, came back. He's survived his run-in with Team Gringo or Hill Team Six. He barely survived uh, Matanza. Yeah, he survived Matanza. I don't think I don't think Lucha, the Temple has anything that could keep him down. No, or at least nothing we've seen yet. Nothing, nothing yet. Now, talking about the Super Friends to go into Team Gringo, heel Team Six. PJ Black, the former Justin Gabriel of the WWE. You know, he came in. You know, everybody was you know ready to get behind him, and then he just went to heel fast. I'd say it's for the better. Yeah. I couldn't see him going face yeah, with, you know, with it being generic wholesome. But he goes heel, and it's flat out spectacular. Mm -hmm. Jack Evans, definitely one of the best heels in the business. He's so funny. Man. One of the he better works, technical wrestlers in the business, He works out random too. shit during the match all the time. I'm saying, he's, he plays the, all three of these people play the heel very, very well. But... Technical, technically speaking, I believe Jack Evans is the most technical wrestler in this match. I mean, he's got he's got so much going for him in the way of physique. Like he's at the right size. He's over there doing flips and shit, and he's doing amazing he, stuff. He pulls off beautiful, beautiful submission moves. Submission moves. Moves. Submission moves. Uh, one of my favorite moves to see him pull off is. He does a takedown into a crucifix pin. Yeah. That's beautiful. I always like to see somebody that goes for the more advanced yeah. uh, submission maneuvers or pins. 
It's yeah. one of the thing. That's one of my favorite things about Drago. He goes for an all four, an all limb pin. Yeah, he the goes Dragon for Slayer. Yeah, yeah. Hawkeye. And Jack Evans goes for a modified crucifix where he just pins everything at one time. Now, my favorite thing about Jack Evans is he's a great technical heel, but his trash talk in the ring. I mean, WWE, they have their thing with Bully Ray where he trash talks in the ring and it's just annoying as shit. Jack Evans does it and it's funny. Or it's, you know, it's, it gets under your skin, but in a good way. You know, like, um... He had an online exclusive match with Phoenix, and Phoenix kicked him right in the face, and all he yells out is, My beautiful face! <laughs> it's just downright funny. But, uh, of course, the centerpiece of this whole team, Johnny Mundo, the former John Morrison slash Johnny Nitro of WWE. He has been a fantastic heel no matter where he goes. He gets under your skin. Oh, yeah. But he is so fucking agile. It is just... What the fuck is he? He's like fucking Spider Man brought to life. Just made an asshole. And even though he retained his most of his moveset from his older wrestling days, it's still a joy just to watch him move. More than that, he retained but added on. Like he's going more high risk. And it's just amazing. I mean that standing sea floor he did, oof. So oh, man. But I mean, so, so, uh, Malcolm, what are your thoughts on this match? What team do you think he's going to win? I think, uh, Drago and Dan will win. You say the Mexican Super Friends with yeah. Iron Man? Yeah. With Iron Man? With Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Mexican Daniel Bryan. The Lucha Super Friends? The Lucha Super Friends. Yeah. <laughs> They're much more Lucha Dragon y than the Lucha Dragons. What do you think? What do I think? Yeah. Like most of this card, it's going to... In fact, like all this card we've said so far, it's going to be a knockout, dragout, ugly-ass fight. Yeah. Well, replace ugly with beautiful technical skills, and bam. But I say... The Super Friends are going to win, because... My belief is that... Phoenix, the heart and soul, is going to become the first ever Grand Slam Lucha Underground Champ. I mean, he's held Aztec Gold. He held the Gift of the Gods. The Trios is all he's missing. And these team, these three have competed as a team before in the first um, Trios tournament. Yes. But they could not get along. I say, with time, that changes. Especially with a common enemy. Josh, who do you say? As much as I want the Lucha Super Friends to win, I'm going to go with Seal Team. Heel Team. So I'm gonna, yeah. Oh. Seal Team Heel. Yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, Heel Team Six. Now, uh, whether or not, whether or not it's by a dirty, a dirty victory, by distracting the ref or whatever, I do believe this is pretty much gonna be one of the top tier matches of the entire card. Okay. Uh. One thing I do want to say is if if Hill Team Six wins, I think it would be better if they won clean. If they won clean? If they won clean, I think it would be better. They could do all the dirty moves they want to do, and then because it's the Lucha Super Friends, none of the dirty moves have effect, so they have to win clean. <laughs> yeah, I I could definitely see that. I mean Drago, he just keeps getting his ass kicked and he picks himself back up. Phoenix, same way. Aerostar, the man that fell from the heavens. The, the David Bowie of Lucha Underground. We don't know much about him, so we don't know what's going to work, what's not going to work. All we know is he's from space, but he's also somehow from the future or something. He's from the space future. Yeah, he's from space future. Which might be somewhere around space Australia. Yeah. We're not sure. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, um... What would you say would be your picks for matches of the night? I mean, if you had to pick three matches off this card. Me? Yeah. Well, anybody. What do you think three the matches of the night, Malcolm, if you had to pick three? Uh, I'm thinking the, the championship match. Championship Wait, which, match. which one? Montaza and... Uh, Pentagon versus Montaza. Batman versus Bane? 
Yeah. All right. And then uh, I think uh, the trio championship. Okay. And then I think uh, uh, the uh, Federal Boy. The Federal Boy. Okay. The unique opportunity. Uh huh. The four for unique opportunity. Mm -hmm. right. Josh, what's your three? Um, I'm gonna say the dream match. Alright. Def definitely the match I'm most looking forward to. Um, so dream match. I want to give it to the Gift of the Gods. I just all around enjoy the idea of the Gift of the Gods belt. It it's like Money in the Bank plus Plan C, but better. Um. Gonna go, and I'm gonna go with a dark horse match. I wanna say, I wanna say the Fatal Four Way. I believe I, last year's Ultima Lucha's kickoff match was amazing. was amazing. The straight fight between the Machine Cage and the Mac. And I believe this one, it, I believe Ultima Lucha Dose will only get better as the weeks go along. Yeah. But I'm gonna pick. The fatal, the four unique opportunity match as my dark horse match of the night. All right. What do you think? I'm definitely going to say the trick match mm -hmm. because, I mean, come on. That match Lucha Underground had last week between Dragoon Azteca Jr. and Puma was flat out amazing. And I feel like with Ray in the mix, it's going to get a lot better. Um, I'm also going to say the Gift of the Gods match. Because there's so much bad blood in there, not to mention the unpredictability that is Nightclaw. That's going to be one of my picks. And my final pick is going to be the uh, Aztec Gold match. Because it, it's definitely going to, it seems like it's going to be one-sided, given that, you know, Montanta is unstoppable and imposing compared to Pentagon. But then again, got to factor in the zero fear to it. The zero fear, yeah. All right? That's going to do it for all the big cut matches off of all three nights of Lucha Underground. Well, those are the announced matches so well, far. Well, like I said, the big matches. Yes, yes. Since Ultima Lucha Dose starts this Wednesday on El Rey. <gasps> and if you don't see it on El Rey, then check YouTube or Daily Motion come uh, Thursday. <gasps> That's when time comes up. Anyway, but um, expect a review. We don't know if it's going to be individual nights or if it's going to be one big night slapped together. <gasps> I mean, we'll debate that later. But, uh, yeah, check it out. It is fantastic. This card, it's like a NXT card. All the matches just seem amazing. Now, before we end this, we're going to do our shout-outs and whatnot. All right. First of all, follow our tag team. Follow Sarah Dorkopedia. Follow um, Devin Cooks. Follow Rodimus on his stupid podcast. What the hell does he know? He's just a misfit. That's no, actually. He's just a stupid idiot. He's just a stupid idiot. A stupid idiot, Bill. Um, it's what do I know? I'm just a fan on Podbean. Go check it out. It's boring, but it's actually intellectual. Um. Like you. Yeah. Go visit our friends at Pro Wrestling Tees. I mean, they hooked me up with this sweet Wolverine shirt. It's pretty fucking cool. Um. Let's see what else. No, shut up. Um, oh, yes. How could I forget? Our two-year birthday is coming up. Wonder Shop's two-year birthday is coming up on Thursday. We, we came out on the 7th. So, um, don't know when we're going to do a PSA, but if you got any qu questions, comments, concerns, anything, drop us a comment on this video or on our page. We don't care. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Dasher, and Dancer, and Prancer, on that jackass behind the camera. Fuck you. Anyway, um, see, we're finally going to get those reviews out of the way. I got them on my computer. I just haven't edited them. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, stay tuned. I got a big project coming up. You don't have that. Yeah, I do. Shut up. Uh, we also got another project. If we can finally get all four of us to sit down and do it. Dude. Where to God? Ron. It's not Rod. It's his fucking work schedule. I you know. fuck. I know it's his work schedule. You don't mean you know me like that. Anyway. But, um... It was something I was begging for it, Malcolm. Oh, uh, yeah. We're also going to have a preview of WWE Battleground. <gasps> don't know how it's going to turn out. Just don't know. 
Anything you want to add? No. Malcolm, anything you want to add? No. Because you're a bitch? No, you are. Anyway. Well, that's going to do it for us. He's mainstream. Malcolm. He's pockets. That there's Rodimus Prime. No, he's not here. He's here in spirit. I don't see his spirit. I don't feel it. Ouch. Ah. I'll feel it the next time he's with you. You're going to feel it in your dreams. No, no but. Oh, God, no. I'm War Machine MJ, and we will see you guys next time. Alpha Mike Foxtrot.